नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्तारिने श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवाशदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे प्रीवियसली वी डिस्कस्ड दैट द वैदिक विजडम इज फ्लोइंग थ्रू टू मेन स्ट्रीम्स वन स्ट्रीम इज उपनिषद एंड the other stream is puran and the essence of the upanishads is bhagavad gita and the essence of all the puranas is shrimad bhagavatam so these two scriptures are giving us the essential teachings of the vedas so first we are discussing the bhagavad gita and then we'll discuss about shrimad bhagavatam in bhagavad gita krishna the supreme personality of godhead is giving us the transcendental wisdom transcendental the word transcendental means beyond transcending this material nature this material nature is the world that we are perceiving through our senses but beyond this material nature there is another reality the spiritual reality that is beyond our sense perception therefore that reality is called adhokshaja adhokshaja literally means beyond sense perception that world cannot be experienced with our senses perceived by our senses like our eyes cannot see that reality the uh, our hands cannot touch that reality the only faculty that can perceive that reality is our hearing through hearing we can conceive that reality therefore this process of receiving the knowledge is called shrota pantha shruti means hearing and shrota means by hearing that reality can be experienced only by hearing the knowledge in the form of sound vibration is coming down from that world and that wisdom is called the vedas vedas are not the knowledge of this world the vedic knowledge has been given by the lord himself right at the beginning of creation to the first personality who appeared in this universe lord brahma and then through a disciplic succession this wisdom is flowing disciplic succession means through the chain of spiritual master and disciple guru and shishya the guru imparts the knowledge and the disciple the shishya receives the knowledge and then in course of time the disciple becomes the teacher or guru and imparts the knowledge to his students or his uh, shishyas and in this way since time immemorial since the beginning of creation this knowledge is flowing the first giver of this knowledge was the lord himself to the first created being here lord brahma and then brahma gave it to his son narad then narad gave it to his son vasudev then vasudev gave it to madhvacharya and in this way through a chain of disciplic succession this knowledge is flowing therefore in bhagavad gita krishna is saying evam param para praptam param para means the disciplic succession praptam received this knowledge had been flowing through this chain of disciplic succession 
परम पर प्राप्त एंड दैट इज द वे टू रिसीव दिस नॉलेज अदरवाइज वी कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द स्पिरिचुअल रियलिटी बाई मेंटल स्पेकुलेशन नो मैटर हाउ इंटेलिजेंट वी मे बी वी ओन बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द स्पिरिचुअल रियलिटी सो एंड इन भगवद गीता कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ इज गिविंग द नॉलेज अगेन at the beginning he gave the knowledge but that knowledge was that in totality that was vast in the form of the vedas vedas have different branches like uh, first branch of the vedas the initial teachings of the vedas is called karma kanda karma kanda section of the vedas are teaching us how to act in this world how to enjoy in this world karma kanda is giving the uh, proper prescription and then when one sees that this place is not the right place to be in and he wants to get out of this world then the gana kanda is giving that process how to get out of this material nature what is the real nature of this material world and how to get out of this material world gana kanda so karma kanda gives bhukti or how to enjoy and gana kanda section of the vedas are giving mukti liberation from material bondage but beyond liberation like when one becomes liberated from this material nature and becomes elevated to the spiritual reality then the consideration is what should one do in the spiritual world and how to act in the spiritual world what are the active spiritual activities that one must become engaged in the spiritual reality is the final section of the vedas that is called bhakti or devotional service activity to express one's love for the supreme personality of godhead so gradually Uh, vedas are bringing one to the ultimate culmination of devotional service so uh, bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita krishna is actually giving that process in bhagavad gita krishna said vedaischa sarvai aham eva vedya in all the vedas i alone am to be known so what is the purpose of the vedas to understand krishna and when krishna himself speaks about himself what can be a greater authority or better authority than that and that is bhagavad gita in bhagavad gita at the very beginning like from the second chapter krishna is instructing the first thing that krishna pointed out that we are not this body our actual identity is not this body our actual identity is the spirit soul that makes the body alive the body is made of matter matter is inert matter is dead so the body is made of dead matter but this dead matter became alive due to the presence of the soul so as long as the soul is in the body the body is alive when the soul accepts a new body there's the birth of the body birth of the body not the birth of the soul and when the soul leaves the body then the body made of dead matter becomes dead again so that is the reality so that is the first thing that krishna is instructing in bhagavad gita at the very beginning dehi nashmin jatha dehi kumaram jovanam jara tatha dehantara praptir dhiras tatra namuhyati dehi na ashmin jatha dehi in this body the soul dehi is the soul the owner of the body 
Who is the owner of the body? The soul is the owner of the body. Who is the owner of the body? I am the owner of the body. Who am I? I am the spirit soul. And we can see that the body changes. Komaram, Jovanam, Jara. Childhood, youth, old age. The body changes. The childhood body, the little baby body grows, becomes a young man's body. And then gradually that young man's body becomes an old body. So body is changing. But in spite of the changing of the body, we, our actual identity, the I, am not changing. So that is how Krishna is pointing out the difference between the body and the soul. Although in this material nature we tend to think that our actual identity is me, the body. The real me is this body. But Krishna is pointing out, reminding, not pointing out, but reminding us that our actual identity is the soul, not the body. And then what's the relationship between the body and the soul? Like a dress. Just as we put on a dress. And similarly, we are wearing this body. And when the dress becomes old, we discard that old dress and put on a new one. Similarly, when this body becomes old and uninhabitable for the soul, one leaves that old body and takes up a new body. Uh, the soul leaves the old body, but that's not the end. That's the end of this body, but not the end of the soul. Soul transmigrates then into another body. Dehantara prapti, deha antara. Transmigration from one body to another body. Dehantara prapti. Then Krishna is establishing. So what is the nature of the soul then? Na jayate mriyate bakadachin. The soul is na jayate is never born. The soul is never born. It's the body that is born. The soul uh, is never born. Mriyate bakadachin. Nor does the soul ever die. So that is the nature of the soul. The soul is immortal. The soul is never born. Soul is never going to die. It has always been there. How it is, we do not know. In the material nature, we cannot understand that. Because in the material nature, everything has a beginning and everything has an end. But the soul is not a product of this material nature. Soul comes from the spiritual world. And spiritual world is the world which is the world of eternity. There, there is no beginning, no end. What is it like? We won't be able to understand unless and until you go there. So, but at least the informations are available. And how can we receive the information? Through hearing. That's why hearing is so important. And not only just hearing, hearing from the right source. The person who has the knowledge, he, when he imparts the knowledge, then the knowledge becomes meaningful. So that's why the spiritual knowledge must be received from a qualified source, from a bona fide source, from a bona fide spiritual master. And Krishna also gives the process. The process is Tadviddhi pranipatena pariprashnena shebaya. Upadekshanti te gyanam gyaninas tattadarshina. One must approach the teacher, the bona fide spiritual master. How? Pranipatena. In a submissive way, offering obeisances. Pranipat means offering obeisances, meaning surrendering himself to him. I am ready to receive whatever you are going to give me. Pranipatena. 
and then sincere inquiry, pariprashnena. Uh, one must question, since it's all sincerity, pariprashnena. Sevaya, one must serve that spiritual master. And then upadekshanti te gyanam, then the spiritual master imparts the knowledge. Uh, and Gyanina Stattva Darshina. And what's the qualification of a spiritual master? Gyanina. He is situated in knowledge. Gyanina. And Tattva Darshina. He has seen the truth. He has seen the reality. So that is the qualification of a teacher. And that is how the student must approach the teacher to receive the knowledge. So this is the process and Krishna is again pointing out that that spiritual reality is our actual place. We came from the spiritual world. We are not a product of this material nature. The spirit soul that we are coming from the spiritual world. And that spirit soul is never born nor does it ever die. The spirit soul is indestructible. The indestructible, uh, that point has been made by Krishna in this way, uh, explaining uh, that nainam chindanti shastrani, the spirit soul cannot be cut by any weapon. Nainam dahati pavaka, the spirit soul cannot be burnt by fire. Even the most intense, most powerful nuclear explosion cannot burn the soul. The body may be finished in a fraction of a second, but the soul will not be affected. Nainang dahati pavakaha. Na chainang kledayanta apaha. The spirit soul cannot be moistened or drowned in water. Nainang shosheti marutaha. And it cannot be dried by air. So that's the nature of the spirit soul. Nainang chindanti shastrani, nainang dahati pavakaha, na chainang kledayanta apaha, nayang shosheti marutaha. Achidayang adajayam. Akliddha ashusha evacha nitta sarvagata sthanu achaloyam sanatana. The soul is totally unaffected by weapon, fire, water, air, and the soul is nitya, soul is eternal. Nitta sarvagata, and the soul is able to go anywhere. Sometimes people think that only the earth planet has living entities. No. Every single space in this universe, there is spirit soul. Just as, although we cannot see, like when we wave our hand, we are touching innumerable number of microbes that are floating in the air. Innumerable microbes are here. They are living entities. Even the microbes are living entities. They are also spiritual beings. They are living entities. Now it's another very important consideration. What's the sign of a living entity? What's the sign of life? Life has six symptoms. Birth, growth, change, reproduction, decay and death. Now let's consider, is, does a microbe take birth? Yes, we know the amoebas and protozoas and other such unicellular, unicellular living entities, they're born at some point and then they grow. Like for example, a tree, a seed falls on the ground, and a seedling comes out. 
Then it grows. A small little seedling grows into a huge tree. Grow. And then changes. The tree changes. In autumn the leaves fall off. And then in spring new leaves come. Then there are flowers. Then there are fruits. The flowers gradually transform into fruit. And in the fruit there is a seed. And in the seed there is a possibility of another tree. Reproduction. So, birth, growth, change, reproduction. And then decay. In course of time, the tree becomes old. And then death. So these are the six symptoms of life. Wherever there is life, the six symptoms must be there. Whether it's a microbe, whether it's a plant, whether it's a tree, whether it's a reptile, whether it's a bird, whether it's an animal, or whether it's a human being. So from that, what do we understand? That all these living entities have a soul. They all are spiritual beings, spirit souls. And then, uh, they come to the human form of life. There are different species, there are different grades of living entities. Like as we said, microbes, plants, reptiles, birds. And then gradually, uh, from animal, then to human beings. So when we come, get the human form of life, whether we only get the human form, then we are endowed with a very special opportunity. As human beings, we have developed intelligence. And with the developed intelligence, we can understand the spiritual reality. When we hear this message of the spiritual world, when you get to understand the spiritual reality, then only our human form of life becomes successful. The purpose of human life in that, that way has been described in the Vedas as <coughs> Brahma Jigyasa. The human beings are meant to question about the spiritual reality. Brahma Jigyasa. So uh, that is where the human form of life actually starts to fulfill its purpose. So in this way, uh, the human as a human being, our most important business should be to receive this knowledge about the spiritual reality. A dog cannot question, who am I? A dog cannot question whether I am a spirit soul or whether I am this body. Uh, and no animal has that faculty, but the human beings have. Uh, practically every human being at some point questions, who am I? And that's the beginning. Who am I? Am I this body or am I someone beyond this body? And those informations are being provided in the Vedas and that is the purpose of this discussion. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sharashrati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunnavadi Paschatta Desha